So you've probably heard about Punishing Grey Raven. This game is developed by the same people who are making Wuthering Waves, and Punishing Grey Raven has been around for about two years now. I've actually been playing the game since its launch, and I've been really enjoying it because the developers really take care of their community. They've been releasing a lot of quality content over the years, like literally introducing some awesome quality of life features, and there were some huge updates introduced, one of which had near collaboration, which was really awesome back when I played it, and now the biggest update that's coming with the game is a dedicated PC client. If you previously played this game on your PC by using an emulator, well, I've got good news for you. This Punishing Grey Raven PC client is super smooth. In fact, everything we're going to be looking at in this video was actually recorded on my PC. The developers were kind enough to give me early access to the PC client, and they also wanted to support my channel, which I'm really grateful for, and I highly recommend checking out Punishing Grey Raven. You can download it on iOS, Android, and now PC, and you can do this by using my link in the description. Now, if you need a quick introduction on what this game is about, Punishing Grey Raven Raven is a fast-paced, super stylish action RPG, and on top of this, it's also a gacha game, so you can collect lots of different characters. Now, I'm never really good at summarizing any game's lore, but from what I understand, in this game, humans are almost extinct, Earth has been completely conquered by the robot army, and the last human survivors retreated to a Babylon space station. And from this space station, you're basically sending out cyborg soldiers and fighting the evil robot army. Obviously, the game's lore is much more detailed than mine, you'll definitely get a better understanding than my crappy version I provided here. But the biggest reason why I fell in love with this game, besides awesome character design, is the combat. While there's only one button to attack and can also dodge, the game has this really unique orb or as they call it ping system. Basically there are three color orbs, each orb represents the character's ability, and if you click one orb it unleashes the character's weakest ability, but if you click two orbs of the same color at the same time, then the character unleashes the same ability but a bit stronger, and with three orbs it becomes really strong. You can also trigger bullet time by doing a perfect dodge, and with this, one single orb becomes like a triple orb if you click it. You're also playing with three characters instead of one, so you can switch between them. And there's also passive abilities, quick time event abilities, ultimates. Like, there's so much going on and it's always happening so fast. But I also feel really strong if I do things correctly. So, you know, if you're the type of player who enjoys perfecting combat, like doing perfect dodges, perfect parries, you're gonna love this game when it comes to mastering it. But at the same time, if you're a casual, you can still easily play it and have fun with a lot of different characters and combos. Like, I'm not gonna lie. You're gonna see some mediocre gameplay from me, but I still enjoy playing Punishing Grey Raven, and I really think it's worth giving the game a try because it's really super polished. And speaking of quality, let me show you the PC client right now. So as you can see, I'm running a PC client right now. You can see my little mouse cursor moving around. Now, there's a lot of buttons we can click on, but I think the first one we want to check out is Members. So here you can basically review all the characters you have unlocked. For example, we've got Lucia, who is a starter character. And one cool thing about each character is that they have a coating, which is basically a different word for a skin. Now you can actually unlock a couple of coatings by just leveling up the character. So for example, going from this one to this one, you can actually unlock it by just leveling the character. Of course, she has plenty of different other costumes or coatings, which is really nice. And I know a lot of you who are watching my video, you like to main a character, right? So there's like a ton of coatings you can choose for your favorite character you want to main, and you can even go for some weapon coatings as well, like uh, this one here, right? I really love the color of it. But yeah, as I've mentioned, you've also got the near collaboration characters here. As we can see here, 9S doing some stretching. Of course, fan favorite 2B. Also, A2 is here as well. Now, I myself have a couple of favorites. Right now, I really love playing with Liv, who has the Imperia version, which I'll explain in a few seconds what this means. But as I'm talking, I'm gonna just show you a bit of her gameplay, and it's just so destructive. I just feel so overpowered when I'm using her. She's really awesome. But yeah, as I mentioned, a lot of characters have different versions. So, for example, Lucia has a starter version called Lo Lotus, which is the one you get to play with when you start the game. But she has several different versions. Like for example, she has a plume version right here, which you can see she already looks kind of different here. And the thing is, not only do they look different, they play usually completely differently as well. Like for example, this plume version, she's mainly an ice damage dealer. And all the skills, all the abilities, everything about the character is completely different compared to the other version. But yeah, if you really like a character, usually you can play the same character's different versions and enjoy a completely different playstyle with each of them. Now, since I've mentioned this is a gacha game, but what's really awesome about this game's gacha system is that it's really player friendly. Like for example, here, Nanami Starfire is a featured character and the pity rate is 60 and if you reach it, it's a 100% chance you'll get her. You know what? Actually, let's try pulling for her and see if we can obtain her. Okay, let's do 110 pull. We first have to turn it on.
And as you can see, the game has a shard system, but you can also obtain from the gacha system actually useful things like this alloy is actually super useful when you want to ascend your weapons. Then we've got money, again, something that you will need in this game as well. And you can get it from the gacha system. And you can also get memories. Now think of memories as artifacts in Genshin. Basically, you're just getting useful stuff when you pull for gacha characters. And there we go, we got Watanabe, A rank. Okay, so that was the first 10 pull. We still got 50 left more. Uh, will it be okay if I just press skip here? We just got a bunch of stuff, and I also think we got the... Oh, when we got this guy, I think his combo you're supposed to do is, like, lay a trap on the ground, and then use his attack to shoot out fire bullets, and then it blasts the enemies for a ton of damage. So yeah, that's a nice pull. On to the third 10 pull. And... We've got another 5-star character, or a rank character. Can we get an s rank character, or do we need to break pity? Maybe we can get lucky this time. Nope, another a rank character, but she's also really good. Well, I guess I wasn't that lucky, which is not a huge surprise. But let's go on to that last 10 pull. And there we go, we got her. I mean, I wasn't lucky, but again, I only needed to make 60 pulls, and it was completely guaranteed I will get her, so that's nice. Also, one thing I want to quickly mention is that if you can actually obtain a free s rank character as a newbie player, you will get a chance to choose one of them for completely free. So again, if you start the game right now, you're gonna get an s rank character for free. Now, there's actually a whole event revolving around Nanami, and the main event is called Her Last Bow, if I understand it correctly, and there's a lot of different sub-events happening within it. Like, for example, you can go and fight in the ghostly ruins against some monsters, you can also play through the actual Her Last Bow story, collect some free rewards, find out more about Nanami here. Yeah, it's a really cool event, I recommend checking it out, especially since it gives out a ton of different resources as well. And yeah, as I understand, this event's story focuses on Nanami, who keeps traveling to the future, and she's trying to prevent this catastrophic end for the world. So like, she's looking for new ways how to save the humanity. I mean, it sounds kind of grim, there's also some lighthearted jokes included in the story, and so far, I enjoyed experiencing it. And if you still don't have her, and thinking about getting her, you can go to the Robo Hearts sub event here, and there's a whole tutorial that teaches you how to use her. In fact, why don't I just take this tutorial myself? I mean, I already have her, might as well let the game explain me how to use her. Yellow orbs will fire quantum compression shots, which will explode and deal fire damage upon hitting target. That's pretty cool. Oh wow, that's a really cool movement. Blue orb pings will fire missiles to deal fire damage. Sure. Oh, and they're probably seeking the enemies as well. Red orbs will deal fire damage. And also will restore additional signature energy and pull enemies. Oh, that's cool. Let's see if we can pull them from here. Oh, I pull myself to the enemies. Okay. Okay, so we're in the second part of the tutorial. And notice what I'm doing here. You see how it's easy to move the camera? That's not something you could do on the mobile version, or at least not that easily. And I think this camera movement you get from just moving the mouse around like this, it just gives a new dynamic feeling to the game. Gain energy by making three ping attacks. Sure, let's do it. So when the energy is full, I can cast this signature called Blade Flash. Huh, and now it seems if I use the signature, I won't be able to ping any more orbs, but I can press and hold the basic attack to activate some kind of a buzz mode. And in this mode, when the energy is full, you cast a Gigabyte Star Strike. Let's check it out. Man. Now that's what I call a cool signature ability. I also think she's categorized as a tank. But she feels like a damage dealer here. Again, you can easily notice like how much effort is put into creating a character in this game. This is so awesome. Like, I'm so glad I pulled for her. Now, I couldn't help myself, but I also obtained Nanami's coding. Which, look at it. It's completely different from the default skin she has. Now, one more thing I really want to talk about is that a huge part of this game is fighting different bosses. Now, these bosses are really unique. Some of them you even get to play with during the story. But one way you can experience the bosses, besides beating them on the story mode, is going into a Phantom Pain Cage mode. Let me actually build a team with Nanami and a few other characters, and let's jump into a boss fight, so I can show you some of the things you can do on the PC client, and also showcase the combat itself. 
So let's fight a boss here. You can see I'm using Nanami with her newest coding here. And one thing I immediately noticed when I'm using this PC client is that the responsiveness is almost perfect here. Like if I'm not being a really bad player, I can easily make the perfect dodges. There's no like lagging. Also, the camera movement here is really good. The controls are responsive. Anytime I like summon a teammate to help me out here, uh, they immediately jump in. The orb system, it is a bit tricky here since, you know, each orb is mapped to a number on my keyboard. So if I need to like press a orb that's in the very back end here, uh, like number eight or nine, it can be a bit of a funny thing, but usually it's enough for me to use just one, two, three, four to select one of the orbs I need because it's not often you have a lot of orbs on your screen since you want to like dish them out as soon as possible. Although there are some boss phases where you need to save those orbs and then quickly unleash them. And if we actually quickly go into the menu and we look at the button position, uh, basically this is the place where you do the mapping. Uh, one cool thing immediately you will notice is that there's controller buttons and there's a controller mode, meaning you can actually hook up a controller to play this game. And I think a controller for this game is absolutely perfect. But yeah, you can literally map every single button in the game. Um, in here, you can also customize the size of your cursor, so you can be like medium, large. Actually, let's see how the large one looks like. Jeez. Okay, this is gonna be a cursor I'm gonna be used when I'm 80, hopefully. You can also increase the size of the damage numbers. I prefer to see big damage numbers, so I make them appear large on the screen. But yeah, going back into combat, while I really love the characters in the game, you gotta appreciate the boss design as well. Like, some of them are so cool, and they even make me want to learn their patterns as well. And the thing is, if you, for example, fight them in the Phantom Pain Cage, each of them come with different modifiers and even sometimes different abilities. So like even if you're used to fighting the same boss over and over, sometimes they can be a bit more surprising than usual. But anyway, let's just quickly finish off this boss. I think it's about time we win this fight. But yeah, that's basically Punishing Grey Raven. I honestly think this game right now is one of the best polished mobile games in the market. And the best part, since it also has a PC client as well, you can play it on your computer and you can easily treat it as a really polished PC game. And of course, if you like the gotcha, you can pull for the characters while at the same time the gacha system is really fair. So I really think you should give this game an opportunity and download it. You can do this by using my link in the description since you'll also help support my channel. And yeah, I really think the developers made a great choice here to release a PC client. And for me, this PC client is a godsend. Since I have two monitors, I can just play Punishing Grey Raven on one screen and watch maybe YouTube on another screen. But yeah, make sure to check out the game. Thanks for watching the video and thank you for your support.